All right, our first story of the day is gonna be the decentralized lending protocol BZX was hacked twice in a matter of days. Now, late last week, the DeFi protocol BZX was the victim of a malicious exploit which attacked their fulcrum trading platform. Although BZX assured lenders that none of their funds were affected. Now, Friday's successful protocol exploit, which netted the attacker a cool $350,000 in gains, is now sparking a debate over the stability and the decentralization of DeFi products. It started when the attacker borrowed 10,000 Ethereum, currently worth about $2.49 million from Didex, which is a non-custodial exchange for margin trading. The attacker sent half of the borrowed tokens, which was about 5,000 Ethereum, to the DeFi lending protocol Compound, and used it to borrow 112 wrapped Bitcoin tokens known as WBTC, which is an Ethereum-based token backed one-to-one -one by Bitcoin to pull off the rest of the attack. Next, the attacker sent 1,300 Ethereum to BZX to open a 5X short position for WBTC. This move would short Ethereum against WBTC with 5X leverage, essentially. On a 1,300 Ethereum-sized position, this is in fact a huge order. The BZX exchange then had to internally convert 5,637 Ethereum to 51 warped Bitcoin through a Kyber order routed to Uniswap. The attacker converted the 112 WBDC to 6,871 Ethereum on Uniswap, finally concluding by sending back the 10,000 Ethereum initially borrowed from Didex. And what the attacker effectively did was exploited a bug on the BZX protocol, causing it to trade a large amount on Uniswap at a grossly inflated price. The attacker was able to sell 112 warped Bitcoin for 6,871 Ethereum because of the supply distortion that was created on Uniswap. Now with the attacker's transaction now closed, their compound account now showed 5,500 Ethereum worth of collateral with only 112 warped Bitcoin borrowed. This works out to about a $350,000 excess equity in their compound balance. Simply put, it amounts to a logic bug within BZX's code, which generated a loss of equity for the protocol. By opening this carefully crafted but huge position, it caused funds to leak from BZX to Uniswap and the attacker was there to exploit it on the other end. <clears throat> now, while some initially pointed to the case of this being an Oracle bug as being the cause, experts have quickly weighed in suggesting that it is just in fact a vulnerability. The team behind the BZX protocol have since confirmed that to be the case, announcing a patch to address the issue that when the attacker opened the large leverage trade, a bug in BZX's smart contract did not trigger their safety system that should have recognized the fault. However, decentralized finance proponents have taken another hit this week when BZX suffered another successful exploit on its platform, bringing the total loss now up to $954,000 in a single weekend. Earlier today, while the BZX team was due to present at the Ethereum Denver conference, another exploit was carried out on the BZX Fulcrum Exchange platform with 2,388 Ethereum being nabbed this time. According to BZX's official Twitter, they stated that they hit the pause button on the protocol again in light of suspicious transactions using flash loans and trading on synthetics. Now, the nature of this second attack is still unclear. We have a lot of good data on the attack that occurred over the weekend, but as far as this morning, we don't have a lot of data. According to a post by their operations lead, Kyle Kistner, in their official telegram, they suggested that this time it was, in fact, an Oracle manipulation attack, making the Link Marines, who are coming out in force, saying that you guys need to adopt Link, feel very, very powerful. Now, Oracles are typically going to be centralized components, which provide external data feeds to on-chain applications. Kissner insisted that the BZX team can neutralize the hack and prevent the loss of user funds like they did for the first hack. Also promised was that BZX developers will switch their Oracle services to the Chainlink protocol, suggesting that it will make the system safer as opposed to the Oracle that they were using previously. Some in the crypto space took to Twitter to attack the DeFi space, with Charlie Lee of Litecoin fame in particular blasting DeFi, saying that he doesn't believe in DeFi, that it's the worst of both worlds. Most decentralized finance can be shut down by a centralized party, so it's just decentralization theater, and yet no one can undo a hacker exploit unless we add more centralization. Pointing out the flaws in DeFi, others pointed to DeFi still being in an embryonic stage. And as with any new technology venture, there are going to be growing pains, and attacking the industry is counterproductive. As one Twitter user pointed out, if we dismiss all of DeFi because of because of this, this is just like dismissing the internet because of email spam. Larry Cermak of The Block warned 
that it's now open season on DeFi exploits, tweeting that it was DeFi exploitation season. Now, of course, because DeFi is a financial ecosystem made up of numerous dApps, decentralized exchanges, protocols, and crypto assets, there are going to be vulnerabilities in any one of them which can be leveraged against other smart contracts on the network. However, with DeFi being barely two years old and expert programmers being thin on the ground, the ecosystem is still in for a bumpy ride before it catches its technological stride. With non-reversibility of transactions being a basic property of most cryptocurrencies and it being this being desirable for many reasons, it's also this very feature which makes exploits and attacks attractive to perform by cyber criminals who get to keep any funds they manage to steal for themselves, made even better by washing methods to make tracing the perpetrators more difficult. And this is interesting for me because during my time in San Francisco, I got to learn a lot about decentralized finance. I met a lot of young guys and young gals building on the DeFi platform, building on the Ethereum platform and extremely excited about decentralized finance. You know, but the, you know, the security opinions of individuals in the space are valid, are valid. So this is still I think DeFi is still a, an interesting learning experience for me as well. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, obviously, you know, as I said, current price is the most important thing. So whether or not they can overcome this, kind of push past through this, I think that they will. The idea of decentralized finance is interesting to me. As to whether these, these exploits tend to be wake-up calls to the platforms that are building out these solutions and opportunities. So guys, do DeFi exploits in less than 72 hours? you guys think that it's open season on decentralized finance or is this just a bump in the road? Conf uh, you know, it's a complicated opinion. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below.